I mean, really, it was a crisis moment for me that created the readiness because I had a really bad panic attack and I thought I was dying. I could complain about how no doctors told me exactly what to do before this. Like, wow, this would have been nice to know a long time ago. But of course, that's that victim mindset, right? Like, I knew what to do five years ago. This isn't on them, you know? Things are just completely different. Hi, and welcome back to Reclamation Radio. I'm Dr. Kelly Brogan, and I am here today to talk health reclamation with one of our Vital Mind Reset program grads who just happens to have the same name. <laughs> so welcome, Kelly Seibart. I'm really, really honored when she submitted. So she's not my patient, not my client of any kind. And I've just had the pleasure of interacting with her initially through her testimonials. It has just been a pleasure. I watched your testimonials and like guffawed out loud. They're so hilarious and so poignant. It was like this incredibly pleasurable combination of like sentimentally inspiring and also like deeply comedic. So your charisma is something that needed to be fully realized, unlocked and vitalized in this lifetime. And I'm just really honored to have played, you know, any part in that process. So welcome, Kelly. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you for having me. All right. So you know that I am very, very interested in the archetypal journey, right? So this mysterious path that we are sometimes invited, sometimes catapulted onto, and sometimes largely avoidant and irresistant to almost for an entire lifetime, home to ourselves, right? And so Jung talked about this as the individuation path and, and what it is to like finally recognize that the way that you've been living is not your choice any longer and you want to exercise the power of your choice to create a more pleasurable experience for yourself, or at least a more real and alive experience for yourself and draw from the agency you have, you know, to, to commit to certain portals to get you there. So I've wondered a lot and I'm interested in what you can share about like the readiness, like why does somebody become ready to change their life. And, you know, we'll talk about some of the ways that your lifescape has radically changed beyond just getting off of thyroid medication since working this program and the ways that you chose to engage it. But I, I would love to know, you know, like, what do you think it was? Was there a sign? Was there a crisis? Was it just sort of a quiet moment in the middle of the night where you were like, I'm ready to do something different for myself. With me, it was really particular. It's funny because I knew what the answer was for, I think, I don't know, like five or six years, right? I had read your book, you know, I think in 2016 or 17 or knew about your work and it was a very clear yes to me at the time. It was very clear, like, well, yeah, obviously this is what I need to do. It's funny because at no point in time was I like, okay, let's start tomorrow. It was just kind of like, I knew that it was there and I knew that that's what I needed to do. Things I think circumstantially are at play here, right? Because at that time, I think that if I would have done VMR, I probably would have gotten a divorce, honestly. And I think that a piece of me knew that, that it was going to be like a massive thing, right? It wasn't just like about my health. And then like the divorce happens and, you know, you get caught up in that and then caught up in new love and like life happened, you know, life is just going and going. And in the back of my mind, it's like, Hey, you still need to do this. And then more time goes by and the little things start adding up that you don't think are that big of a deal. Right. So I was doing a lot of things that were unhealthy and and making a lot of choices that were not cool, you know, including my diet and drinking too much alcohol and, you know, my sleep was affected. I mean, I had this very long list of things that I was, you know, suffering from all while in reality, it was because I was making those choices. It wasn't like I was being inflicted. I wasn't being broken. It wasn't like my body was malfunctioning. All of my complaints were directly related to choices that I was making, like period. I just started really disliking the way that alcohol was making me feel. And I started actually getting anxious when I was drinking and I had this really bad string of panic attacks. It was because I started drinking around, well, not drinking, but I definitely was self-medicating in, in many ways, you know, around the age of 23 and on. And, and that started because of a string of kind of traumatic events and the lack of any kind of of information of what was really going on with me. 
There was nobody in my world that was like, hey, Kelly, I think this is what's happening. And here's some preventative things you can do. Here's what you need to start practicing like right now. Like that didn't exist. And so self-medicating was a thing. And I say self-medicating and I'm also referring to medications that doctors had put me on as well. And so lo and behold, like, you know, fast forward 20 years, I stopped, you know, using the self-medicating things and boom, my panic attacks are back just like they were when I was 23, which started the self-medicating in the first place because I'd never done anything to change anything or help myself. Here they are again. And I mean, really, it was a crisis moment for me that created the readiness because I had a really bad panic attack and I thought I was dying. I mean, I literally was like, okay, my respiration is failing. And like, this is it. This is the moment like you're dying. You're like dying right now. And like, you know, my husband's rushing me to the hospital and it's like this melodramatic thing. The next day I was like, that's it. You're done. Get out from behind the wheel. You're going to hang out in the passenger seat for a while. And someone else is going to make your choices and you're going to like it. Like I was kind of like fed up with myself and just very much like, that's it. You're done. You're going to start doing something that is healthy for you now. And of course I already had known the answer for five years. It was VMR. (laughs) And so it was just kind of a weird coincidence because like that day there was a special for a vital life project and I had been wanting to be a part of that community for like four years and I was like yay I can finally do VLP and then like the next day after that there was a thing for VMR and it was just very synchronistic and like meant to be and it just I didn't really have time to even think about whether or not I mean it was just a very clear yes like you're not going to make your choices anymore you're done VMR is going to make the choices for you for a while so sit back and do what you're told <laughs> like it was so there's almost yeah I love hearing about this because there's almost like the meta choice that you're making is to participate right so you are making right. choice almost, you know, some I've, I've thought a lot about, you know, what is the role that I play in this container because of the outcomes that we've seen? It's like, clearly it's not because of me doing some magic in there. I'm not even involved. We never even met. Right. So what is actually happening? And sometimes yeah. looking at my own path, I think, well, we have a moment in our self-maturation process where we choose the good parent, right? Like we choose the good mentor, if you will. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're a clinician. I know you've had this experience, you know, with your clients and it's real, right? So, so when I first worked with the naturopath who helped me to learn about a lot of the tenets of you know, VMR, I gave her that level of authority, right? But I was the one giving her the authority because I was the one choosing her as like a good mother, let's say, right? And allowing her to actually like parent me with my consent, right? So it's almost like a, interestingly, like a a consensual domination, right? So I trust you to command me, but I'm the one who's consenting and choosing. So in that framework, that psychological space, there's so much room for defragging, reprogramming, and repatterning old ways of interacting within the self in that tense sort of like self-reprimanding, self-flagellating, self-punishing sort of energy of like kind of hoping to do better, but like failing, right? So we get into these kinks of like stuckness. So once you decided to do it, there are many, many people who invest in, you know, programs who never do it, right? So that's very, it's more common than not, but you decided to do it. So even though you were saying, you know, I'm just going to be told what to do. I'm going to follow orders from a trusted source, at least a source that feels trustworthy. Right. You actually were the one executing, right? You actually were the one following through and you actually were the one engaging. So was that, what was that like? You know, was that difficult? Did you waver? Did you have to like whip yourself into shape or did it just, you know, become what I call chopping wood, carrying water? Like just sort of like, okay, today we'll do this tomorrow. We'll do this, you know, like very basics, keep your gaze, like just a couple of feet in front of your feet. Yeah. I was definitely chopping wood, carrying water. It was actually really easy for me. I didn't struggle at all with the, like, you need to do this and don't do this part of it. And I think you touched on a really important thing, which is like, we, at least For me, I immediately believe the things that people tell me who I trust, right? Almost maybe to like a fault. I don't know. But so I came into it in a very like trusting way. And and it, but it's because of the way that you lay things out where you actually explain 
why you're doing things and why you're not doing things, which I think other programs don't really do. Like, tell me why I shouldn't eat gluten. And what does that have anything to do with my mental health? Right. And so the explanation is all there. So you, you know, exactly why you're not supposed to do the things that are on the, you know, no list and then how the things on the yes list actually help. So with that explanation, I can put intention behind it and that makes it so much more powerful. But for me, just doing the program in general, once I made the commitment, there was no room for messing around. I mean, I did everything exactly like to the T, like by the book. And that's for my own satisfaction of it, right? Because otherwise I'm like, well, if you don't do this or whatever, you know, I just didn't want to have that wishy-washiness in my head of going, well, could it have been better? Or, you know, if I didn't have the outcomes, like, oh, is it because I did that one day? No, like I didn't want any of that chatter. So, I mean, I totally stuck to the diet. I mean, even to the point where, you know, like cacao is okay, you know, on occasion. And it was like, no, no cacao, no chocolate, no turmeric lattes. Like I'm drinking water, (laughs) nothing but Berkey water. I was hardcore about it, you know, stuck with the meditations. I increased the meditations, you know, did all of the journal entry and writing a couple times each. So I was very in it and enjoyed being that way. Like it wasn't a chore. It was so enjoyable, you know, like going through the motion every day and having my list of things I wanted to do was exciting. I thought it was easy to commit to it, frankly, but maybe that's just because of the headspace I was in. I was, I was done with myself. So it was like refreshing to have somebody else be like, do this today. I'm like, thank you for the love of God. You know, I love that. And I think too, a lot about, because I am constructed similarly and have ease in creating what I would call masculine containers and structures for myself, you know, exercising discipline and sticking to things and following through. However, I've also been exploring recently, like what is the feminine complement to that? And what I've come to, it's like, I just made eggs for myself. Right. And sometimes I would put the pan and the little bowl that I ate them in, in the sink and like deal with it later. Right. However, I've come to this sort of like self devotion through the relationship to my future self. Right. So like, how do we behave and choose to behave now that is a devotional practice to the future self, right? Like I'm going to wash the dishes now (laughs) out of love for my future self. Right. So it sounds like there was some combination because otherwise that like rigidity can feel punitive and set you up for the familiar experience of delicious failure, right? Where you're like, oh, see, I couldn't do it again. Nothing works for me. And that whole victim story can emerge almost like you wanted it to, right? But instead it sounds like there was this, like, I'm going to create the conditions for myself that are going to feel good, feel best on the end of this, like the other end of it, so that I can look back and say, that was an experience that I really co-created. So I love that. It's like a helpful, very helpful nuance. Tell us what happened. You know, you gave us a picture of sort of the the before, right? Where you were in this place of having actually like, you know, what could be referred to as like clinical symptoms, right? Of panic and anyone who's experienced, you know, what could be described as a panic disorder, panic attacks, you know, panic related symptomatology know that it's one of the the few things that can bring you to the brink of your own self-betrayal very easily, right? Like straight to the emergency room, straight to the Xanax or Clonopin. I wonder if you could sort, sort of describe, right? Because the program's 44 days. They're probably shouldn't be any like major miracles happening in 44 days, although I see it with regularity. And honestly, I'm sort of shocked every time. And there's like, you know, a numerology, obviously many practices are 40 day practices. There's something to, you know, that time window that is also enough, you know, to sort of make a shift to lay new snow on the mountain so you can ski new tracks, you know, rather than the same old one. I mean, I was very uncomfortable, like day-to-day life, right? I mean, on top of anxiety, it was like depression, major sleep problems. I mean, I wasn't sleeping pretty much at all. I mean, if I would have gone to the doctor, I would have for sure been diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome. My guts were constantly wrecked, you know, mood swings, anger outbursts. I was just not okay. It did VMR. It's almost immediately, I feel, you know, better, honestly, by the end of the 44 days, none of the things that I just listed off were happening anymore. I mean, 
I'm calm. Definitely, you know, I haven't had a panic attack since before I started VMR. All of the things I just listed are gone. So my stomach is completely fine. There's no stomach issues. You know, my sleeping is rock solid. I go to bed at nine every night. I sleep completely through the night, wake up happy at 6 a.m. with no problems. You know, I'm not hitting snooze for two hours anymore. My mood is just very like even keyed, way higher energy. You know, I didn't have any motivation to do anything and my productivity was low just on a day-to-day basis. I mean, I was just kind of lounging around the couch because I didn't have enough motivation or energy to like do anything like the dishes even. So I, you know, now I just get like lists of things done every day and it feels good because it's, it it didn't feel good to be that way. I always was feeling bad about myself. So everything feels different. There's no, you know, mood swings. I deal with stress differently. The thing about VMR is that you get a massive perspective change, which is difficult to describe unless you go through it. So it's the way that you look at all of these things, you know, getting into that whole victim mindset is massive. You know, I could complain about how no doctors told me exactly what to do before, you know, before this, like, wow, this would have been nice to know a long time ago. Thanks. You know, like, did anyone care to tell me I should stop drinking whiskey? But of course that's that victim mindset, right? Like I knew what to do five years ago. This isn't on them, you know? So I think I'm like projecting a little bit there, but (laughs) things are just completely different. 